At day 81, everything's looking great for these sweet potato vines. The leaves are very green and lush. They're perky. They grow a lot faster than the honeydew. And so far, I wish I had watered a little bit more from the top to promote the growth of new vines, and we'll talk more on that later. The water tray for this pot runs out really fast. Every third day, I'm basically seeing a dry bottom, and you can see these sweet potato vines sticking out their roots from the vents. We have a little guest here. This is a white colored leaf hopper. These use their mouth parts to pierce stems and leaves of plants to drink the fluids inside for sustenance. I just see one here and one there occasionally. It's nothing to be alarmed about unless we see a lot more and all of the same kind. That would be an infestation. This here is vine 4 and it has very good leaf development but you know it's also kind of stunted in growth. It's nothing like vines 1 through 3 that just kind of shot out and kept elongating and growing new leaves. And if we peel aside vine number 4, you can see vine number 5. So the positioning of the origin of this vine is different, and it may have come from this other tiny little shoot system that I saw and originally designated as shoot system 2 back when uh, the tubers weren't buried. I'm going to water the top for vines 4 and 5 and this might be just what they needed for further growth because the tuber resources are likely exhausted having all been spent on vines one through three so I haven't dug anything up yet but I don't want to disrupt this entire little soil system it's day 87 and right now it's about 2 p.m. The plants are in full sun and will soon be in the shade again because of that wall I know it's hard to see but these are tiny little spiders that look basically white to our eyes and they're spinning little communal webs. They're running all over my leaves now. And they're catching these little tiny insects that are much smaller than them. So I don't really know what's going on. I've seen communal spiders operate in nature documentaries, but not here in this part of the country and certainly not on this scale. Usually they look positively huge compared to this. And those that are featured in nature documentaries are still very, very small spiders. This pot is just bustling with non-plant life and here we have a lot of fungi so there's been a lot of mushrooms and I think these are some kind of ink cap basically they sprout up overnight because they've been watering from the top a lot for vines 4 and 5 and what that does is it generates mushrooms but it's so hot and dry here in California during the day that the mushrooms die upon contact with the sun but you have a lot of small ones down there so you know, if you look at my yellow onion series, I have these narrowed down to maybe being some kind of bonnet species or ink cap. I kind of think they're some kind of ink cap, and these are what they look like in their infancy. So mushrooms take on vastly differing appearances as they grow bigger. So I just removed that dead leaf that was covering what I thought would be a lot more tiny little mushrooms, but that's not the case. It's just a clump of dirt. At first I thought this was some kind of flower, and I just thought about how bizarre that was, but this is actually what I believe to be a dried out mushroom. Since it doesn't come into direct contact with the wind and sun, it doesn't dry out in the same pattern. It just ends up flattening like this and splitting, kind of like a daisy. So there's a lot of uh, roots just running around this thing, you know, on the bottom of this dry water tray, and it's time I fill this up again. Mushrooms can be incredibly hard to identify. They vary wildly in appearance depending on how big they are, you know, what stage of maturity they're at. And even so, you can compare mature mushrooms from place A to place B and they'll look wildly different and different even in different kinds of lighting. So that's very tricky. But I think I've made a positive ID. This is Copernilus disseminatus. It's an ink cap mushroom. This species is known as fairies bonnets or trooping crumble cap. So the use of the word bonnets kind of makes it confusing since I think this is actually an ink cap mushroom. Fairies bonnets are edible but they don't have enough taste to be considered worth eating. They often grow in the hundreds or even thousands in astonishing numbers on fallen trees. So that's quite a relief. I don't have to worry about being poisoned if a little bit of this gets into the final crop. It's day 95. Everything looks fine. There are a few yellow leaves uh, we haven't really seen that before, but I'll start watering from the bottom because I figured vines 4 and 5 probably have roots long enough, it's been long enough, to start getting water from the water tray, or at least the soil that's soaked above it. 
This was never intended to be a documentary about spiders, especially spiders this tiny with their communal webs, but this is kind of interesting in and of itself. You know, they have these large communal webs, large compared to them, and they seem to have food wrapped up here and there in tiny little specks smaller than them, but I can't really tell as to what they're eating. And you know, this might come into play later on if they're eating stuff that might be harming the plant. That's a good thing, but at the same time, spiders will only eat a fraction of the prey that's harming the plant. So if there's a bigger issue, I need to find out what it is and what's causing these leaves to go yellow. Here's another leaf hopper on my balcony, and I'm just assuming that it's going after my sweet potato vines. So the soil near the center where vines 1 through 4 are originating is still very wet, and you can see more leaves are dying. At day 98, we're finally starting to see some adversity in this growing project, and that's not a very welcome sight. So the vines haven't been growing for some time, except vines 4 and 5, and a lot of leaves are dying off or fading, becoming more yellow. They're a lot less lush now, even though they've been in the shade where they're protected. So I have to figure out what's going on.